Greetings, I am not Eon, and welcome to Skylanders Portal Casters, where in this episode we're going to be talking about our favorite and least favorite Skylanders from each game and why, a pretty monumental topic. I'm your host, Inklander, and I'm joined by my co-host, GF Ditto. How's it going today, Inklander? Doing great. How are you, Ditto? I'm actually raring to talk about this topic. I'm excited for this. Let's do it. Yeah, me too. This is so huge. This is a question that I think a lot of Portal Masters ask themselves all the time. Is like, who's who's your favorite? Who's your favorite? Who do you not like? And the great thing with Skylanders is that this isn't just a franchise that has a character roster of 2 or 12. There's over 300 different characters in this franchise, which is monumental so everyone's going to have a completely different answer and this is going to be a great topic to dive into so do you want to go ahead and start and let's start with the original game and work our way forward if that's okay with you that's exactly how i would have proposed it so we begin with spyro's adventure my favorite character out of all 32 characters plus variants i think there were five variants in spyro's adventure my favorite i didn't even have to think about it hands down goes to sunburn uh, sunburn sunburn <laughs> sunburn is i always referred to him as the phoenix chicken being that trap team my first game they reference a phoenix chicken sunburn fit the bill that's where he's been all this time he got captured by chef pepper jack <laughs> yep pretty much that's why there was never a series two or a light core or an elite or, or a supercharger anything <laughs> just keeps going <laughs> Oh my gosh, he's so neglected. <laughs> so my favorite from Spire's Adventure is Sunburn, the forgotten one. Sunburn has powerful fire attacks and the ability to teleport super quick. And in regards to the game that he was released with, actually overall very powerful character. And I love his design, Phoenix Chicken all the way. He's great. Forget about the Forgotten Eight. He's literally the Forgotten One. Every other character released from the original game got something. Whether it was a Light Core, or an Elite, or a Series 2. And then it's it's Sunburn. It's just, it's just Sunburn. I don't know why. Did Sunburn sell that poorly? That they felt like they didn't... Like, did Dragon's Peak? Because uh, Sunburn was part of Dragon's Peak. Did Dragon's Peak really sell that bad to where they didn't want to do another Sunburn? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what happened? I don't know. That's, that's still a mystery. My guess is they just forgot about him. Honestly, that must be it. When you are working with a character roster this huge, some characters will slip through the cracks, and then others just get remembered too often. The only other logical explanation I can come up with is that Sunburn was too powerful and they didn't want to replicate that. There you go. Yeah, I'm fine with that reasoning. For me, my favorite from Spyro's Adventure is Camo. I really like Camo. He's just a really fun character in that... He's not quite what you would expect for a life character, but also exactly what you would expect for a life character. <laughs> like, he's this leaf dragon, which is really cool. I really like the look of him. And he also has this light beam kind of attack, this like photosynthesis kind of attack that he's able to use as his primary. He also has a bunch of fruit-based attacks with being able to hide in the watermelons. Watermelons being able to kind of like help take some of the damage away from combatants and enemies. It's actually a pretty cool kind of character layout, right? It's Shroom Boom, but done way better. Way better. You could even say he packs a fruit punch. Yes, he packs a fruit punch. And Camo is just a really fun character design. He does exactly some of the things you would expect from a life character, but then he also doesn't. I wouldn't have expected that Camo does photosynthesis beam kind of attacks, but he does. It's really cool, and I, I really like that. And honestly, I'm a big sucker for the dragon characters. I really, really like a lot of them, and... Camo's mine. If I had to pick a favorite from Spyro's Adventure, hands down, it's Camo. He's great. Going off of that, now that we've talked about our favorites, who's our least favorite from Spyro's Adventure? Once again, I didn't even have to think about this one. It's Eruptor, hands down. Oh, really? Interesting. Why, why Eruptor? Well, for one, he is the worst of the fire, or the least good, rather, of all four of the fire elemental characters in Skylander Spyro's Adventure. He isn't very fast. His primary attack is an over-the-head lob that has no homing or guidance whatsoever, so it's not exactly the most accurate thing in the world. And he was just the most disappointing to play as out of all the characters available. In no other elemental category did one character fall so much short of the rest of them than Eruptor did with the fire elements in this game. Interesting. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, for me, my least favorite is actually Whamshell. Ooh, okay, I can see that. With Whamshell, a lot of it's, like, the design. A lot of the other water characters, like Zap and Slam Bam and Gilgrunt, they all have this blue kind of color scheme to them. And then Whamshell is, like, a stark contrast being this kind of, like burgundy kind of color a lot of his moves are just kind of mediocre to me like you know he has the mace and that's kind of cool but like meh there's other kind of smasher kind of characters that exist in skylanders that i think are done better and you know he also has the starfish kind of attack which i'm not really too keen on it's just i don't know I've, i felt like his character design was a little clunky like it didn't really like click as well with some of the other water characters and just kind of generally he felt a little bit more out of place to me and overall i'm just not that big of a fan of his move set of course i feel sorry for him being part of the forgotten eight and not getting anything until the light core but even the light core one kind of is just disappointing I like the light, it's pretty bright, but having his mace be all lit up, kind of weird. But that's beside the point. Anyway, for me, it's Wham Shell. Well, well said. Moving on to Giants then, I believe. Would you like to go first with your favorite here? Yeah, absolutely. So mine in Giants is Tree Rex, actually. This one was pretty, pretty close between Tree Rex and Flashwing, because I love Flashwing's design. She's such an awesome, powerful female Skylander, and I just, I don't know, I really, really like her attacks, but for me, it has to be Tree Rex. I like his light core elements, his overall design is really cool, and the other thing that he does is he acts very similarly to Camo. I mean, yet again, it's one of those life characters that when you look at him, you can see him like, okay, yeah, of course he's probably going do some sort of smash attack to the ground but then also the photosynthesis cannon with tree rex too that's really cool i like how tree rex is definitely a mixed character where yeah he has a lot of stuff where you need to have enemies be up close and personal but he's also ranged too with that cannon as well which can either shoot in a beam or can also shoot in bursts which is really cool and honestly of the characters to put in the starter pack of the new characters I think he was a great choice. He has a pretty cool light core element. He shows that off really well. I think he's one of the strongest of the giants. You know, he's definitely up there for me in terms of giant design and giant gameplay. And I don't know, for me, it was him. He's really cool. Both him and the gnarly variations. When comparing the two, I definitely like the traditional color scheme first. But he's a great character. Overall, he feels like a really complete package to me. What about you, Ditto? Once again, I still didn't even really have to think about this one. My favorite from the Giants game goes to Scarlet Ninjini, and yes, specifically the Scarlet Ninjini. And that was almost purely based off of just character design alone. But she's also a fun Skylander to play as, especially in games beyond the one she came out in. She is also a mixed character in the way of combat skills, because not only does she have those two swords that are rather a good combo technique, but she can also hide in her bottle and shoot missiles. Yeah, she's pretty cool overall. Overall, she's a fun character to play as. She is the only female giant and has a great design. And based on that, she's my favorite. Only female giant. That's ridiculous, which is a topic for another podcast. She has a great design. She's a great kind of callback to I Dream of Genie, which, you know, I think the writers of Skylanders Academy got and they went and named an episode i dream of ninjini so honestly i think she has a really cool character design and her moveset really fits that as well so what about your least favorite from giants i have a feeling like it might be very very close to mine <laughs> it's absolutely 100 percent shroom boom and there was no contest there yeah that's also mine <laughs> That's also mine. It was pretty close to Swarm, I have to say, because Swarm I also really don't like. His design's kind of okay, and his attacks are kind of okay. They're not really anything spectacular, like he's my least favorite giant. But Shroom Boom is a particular kind of bad. (laughs) I liked Shroom Boom's character design. He was designed fairly cute. When I first saw him on the shelf, I picked him up because, hey, he's kind of cute, let's grab him. And then everything else about him kind of just flopped from there yeah have you ever tried speed running anything with shroom boom no but i know you have (laughs) i wouldn't recommend it (laughs) (laughs) i watched that (laughs) it's an awful move set honestly it really is his primary attack is so ranged that it's pointless to the point where he lobs everything so far over the characters 
the attack is just there, there's no point to it like it takes too long and he has no ability to aim that was the biggest drawback to him was that you can't aim his attack so oftentimes the enemies are up against you and dealing damage and there's nothing you can do except run away and try again yeah, and then the thing is, is you think, oh, let me counter that by putting out the, like, mushroom barrier, kind of very similar to, like, Camo's fruit barrier, but then you realize, oh, wait, I still don't have the problem fixed of my primary attack exactly. being so awful. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and then the parachuting mushrooms don't really do anything either, so overall, it's just, uh, yeah, the way he looks is... That's Great. the only thing he's but got going for him. his character design is awful. So I'm with you on that. That's my least favorite giant character by far. So how about Swap Force, Ditto? Who's your favorite Swap Force character? See, and this one I really had to think, and I immediately disqualified Magnajet based on the fact that he's probably only my favorite because he is the best for speedrunning Swap Force and Trap Team. Yeah. So I disqualified him based on that's probably where my bias comes from. I decided to go for a less obvious answer and actually ended up landing on Roller Brawl. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Roller Brawl's great. Another super speedy character. One of my first ever speedruns was done with Roller Brawl. She's a powerful melee fighter. Not the most powerful, but a powerful melee fighter. And she gets the job done well being a ton of fun to play as. You literally are skating circles around your enemies as you beat them to death. Yeah, she is a really fun character. She has a great character design. Her personality is there. It's hardcore roller derby. All the moves showcase that. I wasn't too huge of a fan of a lot of the Swap Force characters. It's my least favorite character lineup of any of the games, but Roller Brawl is amazing. She's one of my favorites from Swap Force and one of my favorites Skylanders in general. I totally get where you're coming from with that. But for me, my favorite is Washbuckler. <laughs> Yet another starter pack character and, and not the last of them on my list. Washbuckler is an incredibly fun character to me. And I think it's because the bubble gun is there, which allows for a little bit of a ranged attack. It has the cutlass for when characters come in close. And also the rolling attack is just a lot of fun. It's a little bit of speed, but not too much speed. And the bottom attack also has the ink ability as well, where you're able to like ink enemies and kind of confuse them a bit. And obviously not one of the strongest Swap Force characters by any means. You know, of course that goes to Magna Jet and, you know, Magna Charge, Boom Jet. But he's still a lot of fun to me. Like, I think the character design's on point. Octopus Pirate, he's the definition of that. I can't imagine anyone designing anything else. He has good character design. His attacks, while they might not be the most powerful, they're a lot of fun to use. And being able to charge up the Cutlass, send the Ghost Ship out... That's really cool to me. So he takes it for me. But Roller Brawl, I totally get that. And there's a couple others from Slot Force that were fairly close to Washbuckler, but not quite there, you know. I can't believe you just implied there's a such thing as too much speed. <laughs> too much speed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I can definitely see where you're coming from with a lot of that. And both of these characters listed, they can both be seen as great characters, but that's heavily in contrast with the next two characters, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, well, we'll see. I guess I'll go first, and I don't have too much of a reason behind this, because it's been such a long time since I've played as the character. I just remember disliking the character so much that I stopped playing as the character ever since I got into max upgrades and max level. And that's Dunebug. It's been, like, two years since I've played as this character, so I really cannot even tell you much about the character at all. His design just doesn't feel like it fits too much with the magic element. Like, it kind of fits, but it doesn't really fit. I just remember a lot of his attacks being weak. Like, I just remember he has a staff attack and not dealing, like, no damage at all. And I can't even tell you anything else about the character other than I remember disliking him so much I've not even <laughs> put his character on the portal again yet. Still. I don't know why. Maybe he's a great character. Maybe. But if I disliked him that much to where I've still not played as him, that must be saying something. Because even Riptide, I have played with since. Riptide's another character that I really don't like from Swap Force. But even him, I've played with him more recently than I've played as Dunebuck. So, <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know what it is about the character, but I just remember distinctly not liking him at all. Ditto, what about you? <laughs> I promise this wasn't rehearsed. Okay. The Skylander I've chosen as my least favorite from Swap Force is Riptide. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey. 
All right, so you picked my second least favorite then, I guess. <laughs> I thought a lot of these Swap Force characters had great character designs. You mentioned Doombug. I remember seeing Doombug. He was one of the first characters I got new in box, and I loved his design. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. I'm like the reverse then. I thought he was like kind of meh, but okay. Riptide, I also really liked his design, but just like with Shroom Boom, I put him in the portal and it kind of all started to fall apart from there. Yeah. The big issue with Riptide isn't that he's not good. It's not that he doesn't hold up. It's that he kind of sabotages himself. Both of his paths revolve around his primary attack and it's just a question of which fish are you throwing or swinging around yeah and that took away his potential to be a great skylander if they had put both fish on one path and dedicated the other path to his attack three he mm -hmm. could have been a really great skylander but overall he kind of falls flat when half of his primary attack is useless yeah, no, I totally get that, because the thing is, his second attack has the whole lobbing issue that Shroom Boom yes. had with his primary attack. And then on top of that, you're changing out your fish every time exactly. you throw it. <laughs> so you can power up one of your fish, but no matter what, you're only giving a slight stat increase to one of those fish, and it's giving pretty much the exact same kind of stat increase if you pick the other path to the other fish. So it kind of wastes the whole path upgrade thing because it doesn't really do much. Sure, like, I guess the primary attack is okay, but all of his attacks feel very slow. Whether it's a lob attack or the primary attack with using the fish as a sword or as a weapon of some sort and even the whale attack that takes a second before the whale even like hits the ground i don't know i get where you're coming from completely because honestly riptide was almost my choice i really don't like his character either <laughs> moving on to trap team who's your favorite trap team character i think that honor honestly and i really had to think about this one this one was the favorite that took the most thought. Okay. I'm going to give that honor to Fist Bump. Fist Bump. Okay. Yeah. I'm cool with that. I think Fist Bump's great, Fist actually, Bump is because absolutely he's such phenomenal. a cohesive character. I chose him because overall, he's got a great design. I love the implications of the whole, what would happen if Fist Bump actually gave you a Fist Bump. <laughs> and he is just actually so overpowered compared to most of the Trap Team cores. He just walks around and causes fissures that, when he goes to attack, will start shooting things at you. Or at enemies, rather. He's just such a cool character. There are a bunch of other characters I enjoyed the designs of, like Flipwreck and Deja Vu and Fling Kong, and I had to go with Fist Bump. He's the best of them. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, Swap Force, I'm not too huge on the character design on Swap Force, but it's like the complete opposite opinion for me in Trap Team is I really, really, really love the majority of the characters in Trap Team. And Fist Bump is one of those that's really up there for me because he's awesome. He is the stalactite, stalagmite, whichever one it is. Whichever one's come from the ground. He's this like great earth character. He's this rock panda and he's all themed based around these stalactites. I'm just going to go with that. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Everything he does, whether it's using his fists or sliding on the ground, it all is based around this stalactite kind of feature. And it's so cohesive and it's so fun. And no matter what you're doing, even if it's moving, you're doing something with that character. You're creating those stalactites. So I, I definitely get where you're coming from there. I totally get it and was one of the ones I was considering. But who did you end up picking? Blades is another one of my favorite characters because of that cohesiveness. You know, he has the bladed wings, so of course he attacks with them. You know, he's able to throw out blades. He's able to cause a tornado that can suck up the blades and, like, spin around him. He's all about blades, but I ended up not going with blades, and I went with Snapshot. Another starter pack character. Yeah, and also the last starter pack character. For some reason, I really like him. You know, he's not necessarily the most cohesive character design, especially compared to Wades and Fist Bump. I, I really, really like just his moveset. You know, he has some short range, some long range. His whirlpool ability is kind of meh. But, you know, when it comes to all of his other attacks, he's just 
a lot of fun to me. And for some reason, whenever I need a Trap Master or something, he's the one that I literally reach for on the shelf first. He is my Buzz Lightyear. He's the one that I always end up picking and, you know, having all my Skylanders feel neglected because of it. I don't know. Just for some reason, it's Snapshot for me. And that's a fair opinion. So, Ditto, who's your least favorite from Trap Team? I think we all saw this one coming, Inklander. I have to go with Sure Shot Shroom Boom. Ah, <laughs> A repose, yes. Why they thought it was necessary to bring Shroom Boom back two games later is beyond me. It was a terrible idea, but actually because I've already listed Shroom Boom for Giants, we all knew this was coming. So I'm actually going to go with disqualifying him like I did with Magna Jet. I'm going to go with Trailblazer on this one. Oh no, Trailblazer is one of the ones that I was considering for my favorite. <laughs> Trap Team was a really solid lineup of Skylanders from start to finish. Yeah. There were a lot of characters who contended for best, and it was really, really difficult to pick out worst outside of Shroom Boom. Because <laughs> they're all just so unique and different. Even the reposes, other than, say, Gilgrunt. Duh. Gilgrunt. <laughs> Trap Team just had this character design with the poses. Just everything had a special feel to it. And Trailblazer is no different in that front. But Trailblazer is, I would say, the one who disappointed me the most in the way of wasted potential. Trailblazer hmm. has one of the highest speeds of Skylanders through Trap Team. One of. Definitely not Boom Jet speed, but close to it. But there's no dash attack. Right. And what should be a dash attack is actually really, really slowed down. That's the Stampede attack. And the fact that that Stampede attack mm -hmm. isn't a dash attack, it's a slow charge type of thing... I think that's what really disappointed me the most in Trailblazer. All of the other techniques, Trailblazer's a fun character to play. You just really don't want to touch that stampede button because it's just going to let you down. Yeah, I like Trailblazer. I get where you're coming from with that attack. One of the things that I like about Trailblazer a lot is the fire attack for his primary is pretty good. His oh, kick is also good, I think. I get that, and I also feel like Trailblazer kind of fixes the Shroom Room problem, because I think at that point they may have realized that having overhead lobbing is not really a good idea, but Trailblazer kind of does that, so what they do? They fixed it by giving him, like, two different fireballs. And there are some lobbing characters that do have, like, a guy system sort of thing they home a little bit yeah so it's a little bit better trailblazer i think he's a cool character design and fun to play as so he's, he's one of my favorite but that's okay my least favorite from trap team is bushwhack oh how dare you what <laughs> i'm kidding i actually really like bushwhack though Oh, do you? Yes. Okay, yeah, it's just, I don't know, his axe attack's kind of boring. I don't know what it is with Toys for Bob and liking to have Smasher characters. Hey, I mean, at least it's not another Earth Smasher character, but then at the same time, none of his other attacks really were interesting to me. He's another one of those characters where it's like I kind of just stopped playing as him a lot until I need him for a life element game. Tough Luck was also very close to being one of my least favorite. I just wasn't a big fan of the life trap masters. But yeah, it's Bushwhack. His attacks are just kind of boring to me. The character figure design is kind of like okay. Tough Luck I think looks cooler, but Tough Luck's also just kind of meh when it comes to character attacks. If I could, I'd just like group them into a category and just be like, life trap masters. <laughs> That's my least favorite character, but I, I'd say probably Bushwhack. That's fair. I can see where you're coming from. One thing I did like about Bushwhack, though, is that, yes, as you stated, he's a Smasher-like character, but he is the fastest Smasher-like character we've ever had, attack-wise. When I was trying to do the research to figure out which Trap Master could break Traptanium the quickest, he was actually in the top tier. That's true, yeah. He was only barely beat out by Shortcut. The fact that he was actually a speedy Smasher, at least for me, that was points in his favor. Shortcut, hmm... Hmm, he's pretty close to Bushwhack. <laughs> I think it's great he's able to break Trap Tanium quickly, but after that, Shortcut's just bleh. <laughs> Trap Team's lineup's pretty great. Overall, I think it has some of the most solid characters, but to me, when there's some bad ones... To you, when they're bad, they're really bad. Yeah, yeah, so Superchargers. Who's your favorite, Ditto? Once again, this was a no-brainer for me. My favorite Supercharger definitely goes to Splat. She's fun to play as... She's powerful. She has an ink golem that can fight for her. Hands down, there was no contest there. I essentially looked at my shelf of superchargers, and she stands out the most, the quickest. Yeah. And the fact is that she was more fun to play as than most of the superchargers characters. Yeah, I get that. The thing is, with superchargers, whenever I look at them, I just kind of discount the eight repost. 
And then already there, some of them aren't exactly the most amazing. Yeah. There's a lot that are just, they're fine, but they're not like over the top amazing. Splat was just one of those, one of two or three that you could say, yeah, this character's great. Yeah, Splat is amazing. That I think is one of the best Vicarious Visions designed Skylanders, period. She is so much fun to play. She's so colorful, which I know actually came later on in development because she's originally a dark character. And the fact that they had playtesters be like, hey, why doesn't her paint have more colors? Turned her into literally the most colorful Skylander that's ever existed. All of it felt like it came together really well. They gave her some really fun artistic kind of abilities. Oh, yeah. She pairs great with her vehicle. Her vehicle, the Splatter Splasher, also has paint-based attacks and is one of the only vehicles that's able to shoot out golems. And they're made out of paint. It just comes together so, so well that I totally get where you're coming from. But for me, I had to go with Stormblade. Okay, I can Storm see Blade, that. Stormblade really is another like. one of those two or three characters I would be able to say is great. Stormblade is fantastic. Being able to shoot out the blades, being able to have rain of blades from the sky is great. And also having that dash attack as well, making a really fun, fast Skylander to like charge through enemies. Overall, she's really, really fun to play as. Her attacks are fast. She's really well designed. I think she fits very well with her vehicle, with the uh, Feather Fury attacks, also feeling very, very quick and fast and to the point. And I really, really love her character. I don't have too many chase variants because I, I don't really count chase variants as part of the collecting personally, but I had to get her Christmas variant just because she's just so awesome, honestly. I think the Superchargers roster is almost kind of completely opposite to the Trap Team roster where it's like most of the characters are just kind of meh but then there's those that really 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 stand out and the ones that do really do and i get splat but stormblade's also like one of the ones that really stands out to me what about least favorite what about you for me it took a bit of trying to figure out because as you stated a lot of these characters are just kind of eh to pretty bad yeah. <laughs> and then I thought about it, and I realized there are some really great Skylanders out there, like Fist Bump and Sunburn. And then there are some really, really bad Skylanders out there, like Shroom Boom and the original Eruptor. Mm -hmm. But even the bad ones stand out as being really bad. Yeah. For me, my least favorite Skylander would come down to which one is the least memorable in this case. Mm -hmm. The one that was just kind of the mehist of all. And in this case, that turned out to be Nightfall, whose existence I barely register. Because, <laughs> yeah, she was okay. But she was truly the epitome of mediocrity among the superchargers. Yeah, I mean, I can get that. Her character design's pretty meh. Like, she's just darkness, I guess, personified. Which, you know, I guess is cool, but also at the same time, it's just exactly kind of what you would expect from a dark character. They tried to give her some dark creepy kind of pirate theme but doesn't really quite work her like, attacks are kind of okay and they like kind of fit with that whole dark void kind of thing they're going for but i totally get where you're coming from nightfall not too memorable i guess the only thing nightfall is particularly memorable to me for is them having those figures that released accidentally with wave one that like were broken but <laughs> that's that's a whole other thing overall in terms of how the character actually plays I, I can get where you're coming from. Yeah. What about you? Who turned out to be your least favorite supercharger? It was kind of close between a lot of them, as you said, because a lot of them were just kind of meh when they are meh. Not for character design. Character design was great for this character overall. The character didn't really feel fun to play as, didn't really feel unique. And that character is Fiesta. Ooh, interesting choice. I really like the character design. I think with Crypt Crusher, he works. He's cool. Having this kind of Day of the Dead themed like musician is a spectacular character design. And I like how his attacks are music-based. They just aren't fun to me. Being able to send out the music from the horn gun that he has. It's cool, but it just wasn't very fun to me. And then him being able to like send out the band minions, I guess. The Amigos. The Amigos, yeah. That was cool, but it felt like something that had already been done so many times before. We saw it with Shortcut. We saw it with Sonic Boom. 
And it just felt like something that just got repeated when at that point I was really hoping they'd come up with some sort of other mechanic. And, you know, I think it really clicks with them being his bandmates. It totally makes sense. And if that maybe had been the first instance of ever sending out clones or babies or whatever, Double Trouble also had that with the doubles. If that had been the first instance and that was the first time I'd ever seen a character have that with the bandmates, the Amigos, I probably would have thought that was really cool. But seeing that in the fifth game with another character after it had already been used three or four times, it just kind of felt like it had been slapped on. Just kind of like, yep, well, we need another attack. What are we going to do? Let's pull it out from the hat. Oh, it's this one again. Or maybe it was really easier for them to program. I don't know. To me, the overall character design is spectacular for Fiesta. I just really couldn't get on board for the attacks. That makes a lot of sense. If the character's no fun, they're no fun. I honestly think he's one of the best designed characters in terms of character design from Superchargers. They even have the after-party racetrack that feels very Fiesta-themed, and that's so much fun to play on. But I can't get on board with Fiesta due to just the playstyle, the moveset. Just wasn't wasn't for me. Moving into Skylanders Imaginators. Going into the last game, who's your favorite sensei? Ditto. Okay, so this one was actually really easy for me as well. I'm going to have to go with Barbella. Oh, that's mine. (laughs) First off, strong female Skylanders are hard to come by. I don't know why there are so few, but there are. And Barbella definitely was one of the strongest Skylanders. I would go so far as to say she is probably one of the best senseis out there. And her ability to just boost herself even further was a very nice touch. Her character design overall was pretty amazing, and there was nothing about her that disappointed. Yeah, I totally agree. She's my favorite from Imaginators, too. Her attacks are powerful. I'm a really big fan of Sentinels and the Sentinel design. And using the dumbbells, I think it's a really clever idea. It's really fun. It's really cool. And also being able to have all these stone kind of attacks with being able to do like the stone shockwave that she puts out. And also just the character design as well with it being this not really translucent crystal is just really cool. It's really unique. This idea that she's made out of pure crystal. There's not too many earth characters that are in that vein. Like, yeah, you have prism break, but that's his hands. Barbella is full crystal. So, you know, when it comes to the gameplay, the power of the attacks, the design of the character, Barbella's my favorite from Imaginators, too. I definitely think there's a lot of strong Imaginator characters that are great when it comes to gameplay and move set and everything. Like Chain of Reaction, I really like. Starcast, I really like. Hoodsicle, I really like. But the one that stands out to me and is the one that I pretty much always want to play as, it's Barbella. It's the same for me. There are a lot of great Sensei characters. Kingpen is one of them. Oh, I yeah. enjoyed Chain Reaction a lot as well. Chopscotch was a lot of fun. Chopscotch, but Barbella yes. is my go-to. Imaginators did have a lot of really cool, really memorable characters. But there were also some that maybe weren't as good. So Ditto, who's your least favorite? This one also took me quite a bit of thought to figure out. In this case, I went with Chompy Mage. Oh, I was considering him. And that's because... <laughs> Overall, it's great to see Chompy Mage made into an actual Skylanders figure. He is a fan-favorite villain by far, having starred in two different games before now. So he's had appearances in three games. And his character is just a lot of fun. The crazy mage who talks Mm -hmm. to his puppet, which I believe is actually alive. Or at least I choose (laughs) to believe it's actually Uh, alive. When they decided to make him into a sensei and they were deciding on his battle class, I think that's where he fell short. It just does not feel right that he's a bazooker at all. He could have been a sorcerer, he could have been a brawler, he could have been a knight, and I feel like any of those would have worked. Heck, maybe even Ninja would have worked for him. Yeah, I know. Bazooker definitely wasn't it. Yeah, and he has that voice line where it's like, why do I have a bazooka now? And it's like, because Toys for Bob tried to balance this too hard, Chompy Mage. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) They balanced it so much to where it had so many things fall apart. It's just so bad. I mean, Grave also was a contender for this position, but Chompy Mage has to be my least favorite just because not only does he not feel right, but I feel like they did him dirty on this one. It's interesting. Chompy Mage is one of those fun, memorable characters. He's a very memorable character, right? And he's known for summoning Chompies. And the fact that they give him a bazooka 
is just so particularly odd. It really is. There's so many villains that it's just like, why do they make this decision? Blastertron has Blaster in his name, and they made him a knight. If anything, why didn't you make Blastertron the bazooka and then make the knight Chompy Mage? That's the easy swap. That There you go. Now he's fighting with his staff, using that as like a sword. Great. Now he has a staff. But like Chompy Mage without his staff just feels like it's not paying homage to the character correctly. Exactly. It was just such a weird decision. So I'm totally on board with you there because mine is also a villain. <laughs> my least favorite, and I hate saying this because he's my favorite villain from Trap Team. My least favorite's Taekwon Crow. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, like, they took one of my favorite characters, and it's all because of the battle class changes, and he changed elements, too, which isn't that big of a deal. He was a dark character in Trap Team, now he's fire. I think that's the biggest deal because it took Chef Pepperjack's slot. It's weird. He had throwing stars in Trap Team as his secondary attack, and then they make that his primary and take away his katana, his sword as his primary. It's gone. It's no longer there. And it just feels weird to me to have this character, just like Chompy Mage with the bazooka, it just feels weird to have Taekwon Crow without the sword. He could have easily been a swashbuckler or a knight. Right. Bad Juju didn't originally have swords, so like, I don't know what Toys for Bob was doing, honestly, with the villains and Imaginators. Maybe they just decided to, like, have a dartboard and they just started throwing darts that represented each character, and they were like, yeah, this character gets this combination of element in Battle Class, she's just like, Blastertron with a sword. That makes no sense. That literally makes no sense. And same thing happened with Taiko and Crow, is it's just like, yeah, you know, it makes sense. Of course he could be a ninja. And it's just so weird, you know, and he also summons Buzzer Beak, which is cool. And, you know, he also has the Flaming Kick. That's nice. But it just felt like such a partial attempt to get him to fit into this ninja throwing star and also fire element kind of category where it's like, oh, well, we need to fit him in somewhere. Oh, yeah. How about we just give him a Flaming Kick? That seems good enough. And also his figure feels like the cheapest of the Sensei figures to me. He just doesn't seem to be made with as high a quality as plastic. The little, like, headband that he wears just kind of comes off at the top, and that just kind of feels not as put together as some of the other figures. He's not in that exciting of a pose. It's weird, because I loved his character in Trap Team, and then Imaginators happened. Part of the reason why I think I probably picked him as my least favorite is because it was just so disillusioning to get him in-game, and it's like, wow... This is no longer the character that I fell in love with in Trap Team, with moveset and just everything being so entirely different. Same thing, really, with Chompy Mage and Blastertron, and, like, so many of the villains. They really only got a couple of them right. Like, Gravecobber's fine, for the most part, but why is he a water element? <laughs> Gravecobber's about what you would expect from Trap Team, but water element? Really? It's all over the place with those. It really is. Toys for Bob, you want to bring back more villains in the future? Don't do it that way. It's been really fun talking about who our favorites are and least favorites are, and hey, some of them line up. Shroom Boom being our least favorite from Giants, and also Barbella being our favorite from Imaginators. And those of you listening to the podcast, let us know who your favorites and least favorites are from each game. It's always great to hear, because typically everyone has a completely different opinion on all these characters, so it'd be awesome to hear what you all think. Absolutely it would. Let's go ahead and move on to doing a bit of a hunt for some deals. What do you say, Ditto? Sounds like a plan to me. And now we dive into our legendary treasure hunt, where we go out and we search for the best deals we can with a specified challenge and budget. As you may know from our Twitter post on Friday, this week's challenge is to find a lot with the most vehicles from Skylanders Superchargers under $30. We will be scoring these lots based on the point system of one point per vehicle, and one half point per $5 under that $30 mark. I do have one point that I can hand out at my discretion for a good deal or a special touch. Whoever ends up with the most points in the end 
is the winner. So, Inklander, let's begin with your lot. What did you find? For me, I ended up finding a lot of nine supercharger characters and nine vehicles for the price of $24.99. That includes the Sky Slicer, Stealth Stinger, Dive Bomber, Clown Cruiser, Shark Tank, Jetstream, Crypt Crusher, Soda Skimmer, and the burn cycle, along with all of their respective characters. So you're getting almost half of the main lineup of characters right there in that lot for twenty four ninety nine. Pretty good. And it is actually half if you're playing on anything other than Nintendo. True, although this does have Bowser. Oh, never mind then. And where did you find this amazing deal? Yeah, I found this on eBay, and honestly, it's a really good deal. It really is an amazing deal, especially for anybody just looking to get into superchargers to begin with. Yeah. Your lot has a total of nine vehicles, mm -hmm. which brings you to nine points, and is $24.99, so $5.01 below the 30 limit mark. So that brings your total down to 10.5 points. But because that is such a great deal with 18 figures in total, I'm going to award you that extra point this time, bringing your total to 11.5. Awesome. That's pretty cool. But what about your lot? Because your lot has something especially really cool about it. My lot includes 11 vehicles for a total of $20. These 11 vehicles include Splatter Splasher, Jet Stream, Shield Striker, Burn Cycle, Shark Tank, Sky Slicer, Dive Bomber, Crypt Crusher, Stealth Stinger, Thump Truck, and the Sea Shadow. But the interesting touch to all of these is that they are all new in box. Which is insane. $20 for over half of the vehicles, all new in box. That's a great deal. That's a fantastic deal. Absolutely a fantastic deal. One you really can't pass up if you find it, which is why I'm not passing it up and I'm actually taking it. That's true. Like me looking at my own deal where it's half the roster. That's a lot of different upgrade paths there for not even 30 bucks. We have both found some seriously insane deals. I haven't scored mine. 11 vehicles equals 11 points. Cost of $20 is $10 less than the $30 limit, so I get one point there as well. My lot comes out to a total of 12 points. Yours is sitting at 11.5. This was about as close as it could have come without being a tie. Yeah, half a point off. That tells you both of these are great deals. Absolutely, and I would highly recommend if you're interested in superchargers and you come across a deal like this, absolutely take it. Honestly, like, both of our deals are insane. Yours is great for collectors. It's great if you just want to get into it. It's great for especially the racing mode, being able to play that with friends. I have a lot of different vehicle options that you all can try out. And then mine, it's literally just half the roster of everything. That's also a great thing for just diving right into it and just being like, here's a wide option of land, sea, and sky-based vehicles and all their drivers so you get all the supercharged combos. So both of these are fantastic. Absolutely. Now let's hop in one of these superchargers and make our way over to the Dread Yacht for our next segment. <laughs> everyone here we are on the dread yacht i see you know ermit the hermit over there talking about clouds and flynn's up there piloting the ship hopefully not into a volcano this time on our way over to iron jaw gulch that is the level that we are going to be reflecting on in this segment of dread yacht destinations a level from skylander swap force so you know what did you think of iron jaw gulch what are your overall impressions of it well, my overall impressions are the level design visually is actually really cool. You've got this Wild Wild West style clifftop town where the land sharks and the kangarats live. Right. And visually, it's stunning. But when it comes down to overall gameplay, it's kind of on the mediocre side. I do enjoy the rhythm jumping pad puzzles that they have. Mm -hmm. They can be a bit of a pain when it comes to the speedrunning aspect of it because you got to get that timing just so. But those puzzles were kind of enjoyable and a nice little addition there. But overall, the scenery was good and the music was good. From a speedrunning point of view, you enter this level 
hot on the tail of a major boss fight. Right. You've just taken out Glumshank, so it's kind of, if you're playing it level to level in order, it's a bit of a breath of fresh air, because you've just come out of this intense boss battle, and you're running through, and it's pretty straightforward, direct. You're only stopped to do mandatory combat, I think, four times in total. So it's this quick little breath of fresh air, platform through here type of thing, and... There's a lot to be said for that. It was a change that was much needed from the previous levels. Yeah. I did like the idea of using the cannon to fire yourself through airships to sink them. That's great. That was really clever, really well thought out, and really enjoyable as a concept overall. But all in all, I'd say Iron Jaw Gulch is kind of on the more mediocre side of level design for this game. Yeah, I have to agree with you. It's always a bad thing when you compliment anything starting off with, yeah, so the theming and the art direction was good. Because <laughs> that's exactly the first point that I have, too. <laughs> yeah, the theming of it's great. As you say, it is this clifftop kind of town. It has a great Wild West kind of vibe to it. And it's great to see where all the Terra Sharks are from. You know, we kind of get to see a bit of Terra Finn's hometown and get to learn a little bit more about that. Some of the enemies are unique in here. We get the Kangarats introduced and we get the Fire Gear Golems. Those are cool. Oh yes, this was the introduction of Gear Golems to begin with, was it not? I believe so. Yeah, I think you're right. So this is the introduction of Gear Golems, which are a lot of fun to fight, so long as you aren't in nightmare mode. And just the whole, like, fire Gear Golem kind of vibe fitting with Wild West kind of theme. It's kind of cool, it's kind of steampunk-like. It felt like it fit really well. And it also did a very good job of feeling kind of like a city under siege. You know, we have all these airships that have to be taken out. And I feel like they did a great job with that. They set the scene really well, like the intro cutscene into the level with Flynn and Tessa flying around on whiskers, having to dodge all the cannons and dodge all the airships. It gives you a great overview of the level. It gives you a great overview of the cinematics that Alchemy, the game engine, can give you. Theming and the way the level looked is spectacular, honestly. I think they nailed it. They really did. As for the actual gameplay, it was pretty mediocre. It was just like, oh, well, you need to go grab a lever in here and then use that to reattach it, build bridge, fight some enemies, grab another lever, attach it, build the bridge. It just kind of, kind of felt a little redundant, kind of just meh. And you make a good point, like, yeah, this is after a boss fight, so you are probably going to want something a little bit more relaxed. And they definitely do give it a pretty good job of that gameplay-wise, but it definitely could have had something, like, a little bit more... a little bit more special to it in that regard. And it does have some cool little things, like the Kangarat Bongo kind of minigame things was pretty cool. The music there kind of sounded a little bit like the Donkey Kong theme. Not quite, but just like a little bit there. And the cacti, if you accidentally run into a cactus, they make a cartoony sound there. Like, oh, you just kind of like bounced off the cactus. That's nice little touches there. As for the level, especially for the gameplay and what it gives you, it just kind of feels a little too long. A lot of the Swap Force levels are like pretty long and a lot of them do feel like a little too long but this one especially for what's going on it just felt like they could have trimmed back a little bit of this maybe cut back one section and that would have been a little bit better and also the level doesn't add too much to the overall story anyway it's like you take out some airships and it's like cool now you need to go on to motleyville yeah and it just kind of didn't feel overly cohesive there it was just a long trail to motleyville pretty much yeah that's pretty much what the level was You mentioned you like the music. Me, I found it kind of ironic that throughout the whole level they don't actually use the Iron Jaw Gulch theme from the actual official Skylanders Swap Force soundtrack. I didn't even notice. Yeah, I don't think they even use it until like later when you're like chasing down the Baron. It's just weird. It threw me off knowing what the music for Iron Jaw Gulch was supposed to sound like and then them not using the music that it's supposed to be using according to the soundtrack. Kind of weird. Overall, great theming, everything else was just kind of okay. I can agree with that. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Yeah. It did okay. That's what I would say. To me, this level is just a way to slow the heart rate after you've beaten Glumshanks and before you have to deal with the Baron. It totally makes sense. Yeah, it's kind of the lull episode. The Eye of the Storm level, that's kind of how I would describe it. Do you have anything else you'd like to add, Ditto? I wonder how cool it would have been to have a Kangarat Skylander. Oh yeah, that would be great. It would have been cool. Yeah, Kangarats, they definitely would have made a pretty good Skylander. But we're not here to talk about what could be a good Skylander. We're here to talk about 
what Skylanders are currently in existence and can battle each other. So I think it's about time that we have some Skylanders fight in the Orkian Arena. <laughs> Now we enter the Archean Arena, where we pit Skylander against Skylander in theoretical combat, because they took that ability away from us with Trap Team when they no longer included the PvP arenas. I'm ready for this theoretical stats fight. Alright, so which Skylander did you bring with you today, Inklander? I brought, actually, one of my favorites from Superchargers that we actually didn't talk about, and that is Spitfire. Ooh. So a little bit about Spitfire. He is a fire melee character. He has 600 health at max, his speed at 46, his armor at 29, and his critical hit at 54. So his primary attack is brawling, and that is 30 damage. His Flash Fire is his kind of speed boost ability. That also does 30 damage. And then he also has the Flame Nado, which sends out the Tornadoes made of flames. And that does 10 damage. And so he has two different paths. He has the Speed Demon Path, which obviously focuses a little bit more on his speed boost, his secondary attack, his Flash Fire. He also has a Fusion Path which kind of focuses on his tornado, his, his flame nato path. So that's kind of the overview of Spitfire, but who's the Skylander that you brought to this fight, Ditto? I actually have with me today one of my top three from Trap Team. I brought with me Fling Kong. Oh, interesting. Okay. Fling Kong has, at level 20, a max HP of 720, critical hit of 56, armor 29, Speed of 45, and Luck of 24. And Fling Kong's primary attack is his disc throw, his power discs. He flings discs forward, and those deal 25 damage. His secondary attack is his magic carpet, which is a dash attack that deals 23. And his attack 3 is Symbol Crash, which is kind of an area of effect thing that attacks for 51. Oh, wow. Okay. That's pretty impressive. What are his two different paths? Fling Kong's paths are the Disc Jockey, which kind of focuses on the throwing discs, and the Carpet Captain, which focuses more on his dash attacks. Okay. Well, it seems like Fling Kong has some pretty good stats, honestly. And considering he's able to have the throwing discs, his carpet dash ability allows him to get in pretty close. And he also has the Symbol Crash, which can also be a little bit more long range, too. Honestly, I'd be a little worried for Spitfire. Fling Kong is a really, really good mixed character. Yeah, sure. Spitfire has those flame natos, which is a little bit more long range. But honestly, Spitfire's strength is at being a melee character. Being able to dash in, get close with those flash fire attacks, and then be able to brawl and swipe with his claws. You know, and that deals some okay damage. But I honestly feel like Fling Kong here is probably a very obvious victor. I would say so as well, because based on you moving in close... As you're coming closer, Fling Kong is pelting you with those power discs because he can fire them pretty well continuously. If you get in too close, he can symbol crash and then just dash out of there. Yeah, you're right. The thing is, is we're having a melee character go up against a mixed, definitely heavily relying on range character here. And the fact that Fling Kong's going to be able to deal a lot of damage, deal it really well without Spitfire even being able to get close, which Spitfire needs to be able to get those hits in. This is Fling Kong. I feel like this is the first time where it's very clearly, very early on, like a definitive kind of victor. But yeah, I think you got me beat here, Ditto, by a lot. 
I do believe so. Honestly, once we weigh up the stats and the actual abilities and how best to use these Skylanders, I would say that Fling Kong is very, very clearly the victor here. Yeah, as we say, usually with these kind of hypothetical matchups, it's really like, oh, well, you might be able to get it by doing this, or you might be able to get it by doing that, uh, playing a little bit more offensively or defensively, depending on the character. But here, it's like, with these characters and their movesets being so radically different kind of play styles, Fling Kong has to take this because of just being a little bit more on the range side when it comes to being a mixed character. Just going to be able to keep Spitfire at bay and deal tons of damage at the same time. So, yeah, it's Fling Kong. The only way it's not Fling Kong is if Fling Kong's Portal Master is asleep at the wheel. Yeah, pretty much. As intense as that battle may seem, it's pretty clear. Our victor for the week is Fling Kong. So that brings us to the end of today's episode. You'll find our website and our individual channels listed in the description. Follow our Twitter, SL Portalcasters, for regular Skylanders discussion and Imaginator design challenges. You can also listen to the podcast on our official website, where we also now have the database posted that we use for our key in arena that details the extensive list of stats for all the Skylanders. Thank you for listening, and in the next episode, we'll be discussing the elements of Skylands. See you then. Bye. Bye. like season eight of game of thrones it's like yeah that was it looked nice